today. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? I woke up this morning and I thought, wow, what a wonderful day to serve the Lord. What a wonderful day to be alive today and see what God is doing. You know, the world around us is ugly. There's a lot going on that God's not happy with. But when you come to the house of God, you get around God's people. You get in the fellowship of God's spirit. Then you realize that, you know what, God's still in control. God's not in trouble, heaven's not bankrupt, and God's not dead. I'm next to Ken. I'm next to Ken. I hadn't been notified. But we came today to lift Jesus up because this is Resurrection Sunday. I've got a word from the Lord for this service today, but I want you to join me right now. Let's invite the presence of the Lord into Praise Tabernacle. Jesus, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for you rising from the dead to give us life and that more abundantly. Now, God, we've come to give you glory and honor and praise today that's due unto your name. Move in this house today and meet every need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Worship the Lord with the praise team. Amen. Let's lift him up in this place. We serve a risen Savior.
Let's go ahead and praise the risen King today. He's the King of kings and he's the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. He rose from the dead. In this world, there are great mausoleums and tombs of kings of the past. But we serve the king who's the only one that has an empty tomb. In fact, the Bible said that he had to borrow a tomb. And I wonder if my God is so wealthy and my God has so much, why would he have to borrow a tomb? Because he wasn't going to need it for that long. He gave it right back to the owner because he rose again the third day. Hallelujah. And because he lives, we can live. Because he lives, we can have healing and deliverance and salvation. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer today. That is part of the gospel message is that because he was wounded for our salvation because he was wounded for our transgression he was bruised for our iniquities and the bible says that the chastisement of our peace was upon him what he suffered purchased not only your salvation but it purchased your healing what he suffered on the cross not only bought you a ticket to heaven but it also bought you a, a healing here and now today hallelujah so we're going to open up this service for a time of prayer. We have several prayer requests on the, on the board here. Alice Poole has a special need of uh, healing for, from the Lord today. Also, Marie uh, Athena has congenital heart disease, and she's going to go into open heart surgery. Uh, Eric Terizo is going into surgery today, and there are a number of others that have a special need. I want to tell you that the presence of the Lord is here to heal and to meet every need that is in this place. If you have a special need, if you'd like to come forward, the ministry team will pray for you. Or if you'd like just to raise your hand and just, just, just begin to speak to the Lord. Just use your own words and talk to him. Lord, we lift up these requests before you today. We lift up, Lord, those, Lord, who are sick and in, in need of a healing today. We lift up Eric Terizo in this hospital room, Lord. We Send your angels right now, Lord, to bring peace into that hospital room. We, Lord, we dispatch your angels, Lord God, to, to bring healing, Lord, to Alice Poole right now. And Lord God, touch Marie and touch every need in this house, Lord. We know that you are the healer, and we know that by your stripes we are healed. And we claim those right now in Jesus' name. Let's continue to worship the Lord today. Why don't we lift up our hands all across this place? Come on, why don't we let the Lord know that we're ready for him to move in this house? You made a covenant with me, signed by the blood that sticks. Now I'm forgiven, called righteous, I'm made clean. You on the cross of you gave it all to purchase me. You are the Savior and the God who sets me free. Now my heart cries, this is my Redeemer. With my whole life, I will give you praise. All the glory. Oh 
thankful for the saving of your soul? Are you thankful that Jesus gave you life and gave you life more abundantly? Amen. On this Resurrection Sunday, we're so glad you're with us today. God bless you. You may be seated, please. We uh, have a couple of house rules. If you're new to Praise Tabernacle, we normally don't ask you to stand up. We normally don't tell you you can sit down. So if you want to get up, you can get up. And if you get tired and want to sit down, you can sit down. Okay? We just came to have church. And we're going to have church. We didn't come to have a production. We came to have church. Every time we walk through those doors, we come to have church, whether it's a Tuesday night Bible study at 7 or whether we come on Sunday afternoon. We came to have church today. I want to remind you that next Sunday, for those of you that knew Sister Cheryl Runnels, next Sunday at 1230 in the chapel, we are going to have a short memorial service for her next Sunday at 1230. Also, if you are a guest with us today and maybe you only come on Easter or Christmas, um, we're going to be moving this summer. So if you come here next year at this time and looking for us and we're not in this building, the rapture maybe didn't take place. It just meant we found a new place to have church. Um, but this summer, by the, the end of summer, we're going to find another place to go. We've outgrown this building, and it's a wonderful time to, to realize we need a, a place to go. So we're going to be doing that uh, sometime during the summer. So keep us in prayer as we're looking at a number of places and looking at things. And in just a little while, we have a couple of really cool things for you, neat things. Our sign team is going to present, but before they do, our kids, praise kids, are going to come and sing after the, we receive the offering. But right now, we're going to give you an opportunity to give an offering. Today is our day when we receive our special Save Our Children's offering. Save Our Children's offering is designed to be where we will take this, these funds, none of it will stay in this local assembly, and they will be sent in to headquarters and to our district work here for within the SoCal district where we are today, where we're going to be doing ministry to reach our children. Now let me make this real clear to you. The world is trying to reach our kids. The world's want to take our kids. The drug dealers got plenty of time for your kids. You understand that? It's time for the church to be sure we have enough time for our children. I look at the two bookends on this group of men and young men you got here, and um, I was fortunate enough to dedicate both of those little ones to Jesus when they were born, and probably most of the others except for these two in the middle. But uh, <laughs> I've been doing this a long time. But watching them want to work for God and realize that Save Our Children offering, some of these children are doing all kind of odd jobs and things to raise money because they want to be what they call a Toby Top Dog. They're trying to raise $1,000. Some of these little ones are trying to raise $1,000, not for, not for their local church here, but to send in to support ministry somewhere else. We teach them at a very early age it's important to give and to do what you can do for the kingdom. So as you give today, be mindful of that in your giving. And then after we have given, the praise team is going to take us back in to worship. And right after them, the kids praise team is coming. And then after them, the sign team is coming. And after them, I'm coming back with a word from the Lord. Dear Jesus, thank you for an opportunity to give to your cause. Lord, you've been good to your children. I ask you now to bless the gift. The giver use every bit of it for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. If you want to give electronically, Brother Sam Troy's in the back with a card reader, and you can go there. God bless you as you give. Amen. Let's put our hands together one more time for the Lord.
bless you, you may be seated. Jesus is nailed to a cross. Agony, shame, sacrifice, love. The sinless lamb of God is bearing the sin of the world. The sky turns dark and the earth shakes. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. His head drops to his chest and Jesus breathes his final breath. His body is laid in a borrowed tomb with a boulder and Roman centurions guarding it. But after three days, the angel rolls the stone away and the guards fall to the ground like dead men. And the same Jesus who was crucified, dead, and buried just days before is doing exactly what he promised. Jesus is walking out of the tomb alive. Today we celebrate Jesus as the risen King of Kings and the living Lord of Lords. We proclaim him as the victorious one who has conquered sin and death. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. All glory, all power, all majesty, all dominion are his and his alone. And today we declare together with Christ followers around the world that the resurrection of Jesus Christ changes everything.
we cry out, Jesus, in our desperation, in our longing, we lift our eyes to the heavens. The Savior that was promised reached down to us, becoming flesh. At his entrance, they laid palms at his feet, as today, in his presence, we fall to our knees. We cry out to him, hanging on the cross, the righteous one whose blood broke the curse. With an act of love that saved our souls, overflowing redemption, making us whole. No nail to the bones could hold him. No crown of thorns could shame him, because he is the one. No tomb could contain him. Death could not stop him. He conquered the grave and rose from death victorious. We cry out, Jesus, 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 you are the resurrection and the life. In you, all things come alive. We will forever declare the mighty power of your name. We cry out with everything we have. We need you, Savior, and nothing else, because in you we are saved by grace. Your glory will shine upon the world, and every tongue will cry out, Jesus is the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Oh, come on. Praise the Lord, church. Who here believes in the only saving name of Jesus? Who here believes and has been healed by that name, Jesus? If you've been delivered by that name, why don't you slip a hand in the air and call on that name, Jesus? If you found freedom and liberty in that name, why don't you shout, Jesus? If you've been healed, why don't you shout, Jesus? Come on, church, let's all shout that name from the front to the back. Shout, Jesus! Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, what the fullness Jesus, of the Godhead bodily, Jesus, he is the image Jesus, of the invisible God, Jesus, our Sabbath, our rest, Jesus, the word made flesh, Jesus, prophet, priest, and king, Jesus, unto you we sing, Jesus, in him dwell the fullness Jesus, of the Godhead bodily, Jesus, he is the image Jesus, of the invisible God, Jesus, our Sabbath, our rest, Jesus, the word made flesh, prophet, priest, and king, unto you we sing. Jesus, teacher, rabbi, with authority, speak parables that enlighten our eyes. Jesus, on the pearl of great price, marriage feast must be seen so accurate and precise. Jesus, from the seed and the sower, the field of hidden treasure. Vineyard and laborers Jesus is the light and the lamb Jesus is the great I am Jesus on the dead He's raised Jesus on the dead and praise Jesus is raised forever Jesus that will never be another Jesus and she will come and see us the way truth and Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, but they shall be filled. Jesus, said to the world, you're a light, shining in the darkness, a city on a hill. Jesus, taught us how to pray. Our Father, which I live in heaven, be thy name.
Come on and give him praise in Praise Tabernacle today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're alive again. Hallelujah. The grave could not hold you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He is the first. He is the last. He is our everything. Amen. Thank you, Sister Princess, for our praise kids. And thank you, Sister Savannah, for our... Adult sign team. I didn't realize how much I missed our adult sign team. They're back. Why don't you stand with us for the reading of the word today and turn your Bibles with us to the book of John, chapter number 20. John, chapter 20. I want to thank each one of our guests that are with us today. Thank you for being here. And for our home folk, thank you for being here. And uh, if you look around, you realize the building's just not big enough. So God's going to do something bigger and better. Amen. Bigger and better. John chapter 20, beginning with verse number 11. But Mary stood without the sepulcher weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher and seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? 
she saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Mary heard her name, and nobody had ever spoken her name like Jesus. You hear me today. When you've heard the Lord speak your name, nobody else ever calling your name will be the same. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Matthew would write this in Matthew 26 verse, or 28 verse number 6. says, He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this Resurrection Sunday. Thank you that no grave could hold you, no death could keep you. But God, you rose again to give us power and authority to rise again. God, sitting under the sound of my voice or turned in, tuned in by the way of the Internet right now are people whose lives are in a mess, and God, they're saying, I don't know whether there's any hope, uh, but God, you are the hope of the resurrection. Uh, God, you are the answer to every situation. Uh, and God, I am invoking that power into this place today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said amen. God bless you. You may be seated, please. When you think about the word empty, when you think about the word empty, the dictionary, as we understand it, means to be vacant, unoccupied, uninhabited, untenanted, clear, free, fair, desolate, deserted, abandoned, containing nothing without content, unfulfilled, not filled, a void. Those are the definitions and the words given for empty. The dictionary says empty means containing nothing or not filled or occupied. And then the dictionary also adds a few synonyms to go along with it. Meaningless, aimless, worthless, useless, idle, vain, insustainable. Therefore, when we look at it, the word empty, we come up with a negative connotation. Now, empty is not a good thing when it comes to our bank account. And it's not a good thing when it comes to our gas tank. Could I get a witness? We don't like the very concept of empty in that way. Empty is not good when it describes the condition of a soul. And if you are here today and that describes the condition of your soul, you came to the right place on the right day at the right time to do something about that. But I want to preach a little while today on the blessings of an empty tomb. The blessings of an empty tomb. But when it comes to a tomb that's supposed to be full, containing a dead body of a man who claimed to be the Messiah, the Son of the living God, empty is a good thing. 
I said empty is a good thing. As a matter of fact, it is a very good thing. And I want to show you today that blessing of an empty tomb. Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection from the dead three days later and his ascension into heaven are all vital parts of what we celebrate today. On what is called by many Easter, what truly should be known as Resurrection Sunday. What is utterly amazing is that with his death on the cross, Jesus paid the price for our sins and all the sin of humanity. He did not pay the price for his sin because he had no sin. There was no guile found in his mouth. There was nothing that he had done wrong. And so today we understand he paid a price for something that we could not pay for. His, his death on the cross paid for your sin and my sin. With his resurrection, Jesus conquered death and hell and the grave. And he leads the way for us to have eternal life today. People often wonder what's going to happen when I die. I worked for many years as a hospice chaplain and I would hold the hands of people that were dying and they would look at me and say, what's really going to happen when I die? And I said, it depends on preparations you made before today. Somebody hear me today, you better start preparing because everybody's got that same appointment with death one day. Uh, and you need to be prepared right now for when that day comes. Uh, you won't face it with fear. You'll face it with faith uh, and say, God, I know when I'm out of here, I know where I'm going. I stood in a hospital room and held the hand of Sister Suzanne Williams as she breathed her last breath. I talked to her just days before that, and she told me, she said, for the first time, I'm afraid. I said, tell me why you are afraid. She said, I just want to know that everything's right. I said, Sister Suzanne, the devil's trying to put a spirit of fear on you, and that's not of God. Fear has torment with it. Uh, you need to rebuke that spirit of fear, and you need to say, God, uh, I have faith in you. Uh, I've walked with you. I've lived for you. Uh, ain't no devil going to make me question my walk with you, God. Uh, we begin to talk about it. She began to talk in tongues on the telephone. Uh, the Holy Ghost came down. She said, I'm not afraid anymore. Uh, she died without fear. Uh, hear me today. Uh, if you're living with fear in your life, uh, you need to do something about it today. You need to turn it around today and say, hey God, I'm going to walk in faith and not in fear. I'm not perfect. I am forgiven. There is a difference when you know that God loves you and you understand that God didn't bring you to a place that he wouldn't keep you and God made you promises and he's going to keep every one of those promises. When you understand that that empty tomb that empty tomb gives us hope that there is a resurrection for you and for I. When you understand the ascension, he was crucified, he rose from the dead, and he ascended. The Bible says he's at the right hand of God, that place of power making intercession for you and me today. You ever wonder why you can't seem like you can't make it through the day and then you say, God, I need some help today and you feel a sudden surge of power? I'll tell you what it is. God's saying, hey, that's my kid right there. Uh, I need to let them know that I didn't forget them. I, I didn't let them, I need to let them know I didn't turn my back on them. I need to let them know they're going to make it. Uh, he's interceding for you and I today. But today I want to focus on this. Mary stood outside the tomb weeping, the Bible said. She was sad. She was in despair. She felt hopeless. She felt helpless. She felt discouraged. She felt confused. And she felt afraid. If you're in any one of those conditions today, you're in the right place. You're in the right place. I will give you a word from the Lord. The Bible said as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. She saw two angels in white, one sitting at the head, the other one sitting at the feet of where the body of Jesus had laid. And they said unto her, Woman, why are you weeping? And they 
You see, they already understood the resurrection had taken place. They already knew what had happened and the importance of the empty tomb. But Mary was dealing with her emotions. We deal with our emotions. We're human. We don't understand everything that happens. We're not, you know, we're, we're not all that in a bag of chips to go with it. We're human. And sometimes we lose somebody and something inside of us says, oh, God, I can't go on. And then you have to wait and say, wait a minute, God, uh, you didn't leave me. I'm going to go on. Uh, God, you didn't walk out on me. I'm going to go on. Uh, God, I may have lost somebody that I loved. I may have lost a job that I loved. I may have lost a situation. Hey, God, guess what? Uh, you're still in control. Uh, as long as i got King Jesus, as uh, long as I've got King Jesus, long, long, long as i got him, i got everything I need. You see, they understood, but she was still dealing with emotions. You say, why would she deal with that? Because she remembered. She remembered the Roman soldiers enjoyed beating him, brutalizing him, mocking him, spitting on him, humiliating him in public. She felt like they had desecrated the grave and stole the body and hid it, or even worse, maybe even burned it. She was afraid they had taken him away. And she said, because they have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where he is. Now, let me back up and give you just a moment of history here. The Romans said that they wanted to seal the grave and put guards on the tomb. They said, lest... The disciples come in and steal the body and claim he was resurrected. So they went to Pilate and said, can we get soldiers to guard the tomb? And Pilate looked at him and said, make it as sure as you can. And the Bible said that they sealed that big stone with like a rubber-like substance to seal it in and make it airtight. And they placed the guards there to guard it. But I can see Pilate as he was smiling when he said, make it as sure as you can. Because he knew something about Jesus was coming back. This man had made a promise. Can I tell you something today? The devil may feel like he's got you tied in a knot today. He may feel like he's got you addicted to something today. He may feel like he's got you bound today. I got word for somebody that's listening to this pastor today. There's no grave that can hold you. Uh, there's no bondage that can keep you. Uh, there's no addiction that can hold you that God can't set you free from today. Because of the resurrection, he's alive. But she had bought into the theology or their thinking. She said, they've taken him away and I don't know where they have laid him. She said, you see, she and the disciples had forgotten the promises that Luke made, that Luke recorded in Luke chapter 24, beginning with verse 5. It states that, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, he's risen. Remember? How he spoke to you when you were still in Galilee saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. And they remembered his words. Have you ever had something like that happen in your life? You're just going along and you're thinking about it. You're, you're having all these problems and all of a sudden you remember, wait a minute. Have you ever remembered that you had some hidden money somewhere when you were so broke you couldn't pay attention and you think, I'm going to run out of gas. I don't know what to do. Wait a minute. I got a $20 bill stuck back here somewhere. Oh, man. The Bible says, and they remembered. His words. We'd given up. Then all of a sudden, wait a minute. He made us a promise. Hold on. What did he say he was going to do? Now let me get back to John's writing 
in verse number 14. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, but knew not that it was Jesus. She said, and he said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? And she, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if you have borne him hence, tell me where you laid him, and I will take him away. Sir, if you've done something with him, you just tell me, and I will take him away. You see, Mary was looking through tear-filled eyes, and she wasn't seeing very clearly because she didn't recognize Jesus. And Jesus said unto her, Mary, and the minute he spoke her name, she cried out, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Oh, Rabboni. She went from a state of not knowing what had happened to Jesus to being afraid, to being discouraged, to being hopeless, to being helpless, to calling him master right there at the empty tomb. You understand something happens at an empty tomb. Her outlook changed at an empty tomb. Her disposition changed at an empty tomb. Her faith level changed at an empty tomb. Uh, Her faith in God changed at an empty tomb. Somebody hear me today. You may be facing an empty tomb, but God's trying to give you hope today. Uh, Because of an empty tomb, uh, God's trying to change your situation today. Uh, Because of an empty tomb, uh, God's trying to give you help and hope that you can trust Him again. He's trying to tell you that your life can be full, full of hope, full of joy, full of strength, full of purpose. Oh man, it's so easy. It's so easy to let everyday struggles of your life get you down and make you weary. It's so easy to let those struggles cause you to doubt the promises of God. It's so easy when you're going through it day after day after day after day and you don't see you don't see any relief inside. After a while, you start to say to yourself, I don't know whether this is going to work or not. I'm not sure that God's called me to do this. I'm not sure I can make it through this. Come on, somebody hear me today. I know exactly what you're feeling with. I know how it happens to every one of us. Uh, we've all been through it, and it hasn't happened to you yet. Hang around a little, a little longer, because it will. It will. You're going to hit that time. But because of an empty tomb, there's power to energize us to keep moving forward. Now watch this. If our hope is dependent on how our worldly life goes, we live as though Jesus were still in the grave. If your hope is in what you're going through right now, if your faith is just in what you're going through right now, if you live your life that way, he might as well have stayed in the grave. If you're sad and you're depressed, If your joy is founded only on your wealth or your success and your health, then Jesus might as well still be in the grave. Somebody hear me today. I'm bringing it home now. Somebody listen to what I'm telling you today. If you're only worried about your bank account and that tells you whether you've succeeded or not succeeded, Jesus might as well still be in the grave. Uh, But I'm preaching to somebody today. uh, You're not looking at your circumstance. Uh, You're going to get up and get past your circumstance. Uh, Your right now does not dictate your tomorrow. Uh, Your present does not dictate your future. Uh, But you're saying, hey God, uh, I got faith something better is fixing to happen. Uh, I got faith that hope lives on. Uh, I've got faith, God, that you're going to carry me through regardless of where I am today. If you're sad and discouraged, depressed, confused, scared, and feel hopeless and helpless and useless and desecrated, abused, unloved, lonely, and lost, then I'm here to tell you, you don't have to remain that way today because there's an empty tomb. I said there's an empty tomb. (laughs) Musicians, come on. I'm going to bring this home. Because of the blessing of the empty tomb, uh, you don't have to search for dead things to try to satisfy your soul. Uh, Somebody hear me. Uh, You don't have to search for dead things uh, to satisfy the longing in your soul. Uh, Because of an empty tomb, you don't have to be strung out on drugs today. Uh, Because of an empty tomb, you don't have to be addicted to alcohol today. Uh, Because of an empty tomb, you don't have to be sold out to sexual immorality today. Uh, Because Because of an empty tomb, you don't have to struggle with sexual identity today because of the blessing of an empty tomb. 
You don't have to feel as though you're about to lose your mind today because of an empty tomb. You don't have to be confused today. Because of an empty tomb, you don't have to feel as though you want to commit suicide. Somebody hear me today. We're losing way too many people that are taking a a way out, thinking it's the easy way out, but it's the wrong way out. Uh, If you're struggling today, don't you go and do something crazy. You come and talk to one of us. We'll help you. Uh, I'll take you to a Jesus that'll get you through it. Uh, You're not facing life by yourself. I don't care what your struggle is today. There's an empty tomb, and there's hope, and there's help for you today. Uh, You can trust the Lord. Because when he rose from the dead, all power in heaven and earth was in his hands. Because he rose from the dead, he left an empty tomb. And I have hope for tomorrow, regardless of what trials come my way. Because of an empty tomb, he walks with me and he talks with me all along life's narrow way. Because of an empty tomb, I can be whatever I want to be. Because with Christ, all things are possible. Because of an empty tomb, uh, I am no longer guilty of my sins. Uh, Because of an empty tomb, I am not a failure, even though I have failed. Uh, Because of an empty tomb, I can reach heights that no one at any time thought it was possible for me to reach. Because of an empty tomb, I am more than a conqueror. Because of an empty tomb, I can break the strongholds that once held me down. Uh, Because of an empty tomb, uh, I know my prayers availeth much. Uh, Because of an empty tomb, I'm a somebody, even when the world has told me I was a nobody. Uh, Because of an empty tomb, I'm redeemed out of the hand of the devil. Because of an empty tomb, my sins are forgiven. Uh, You may be going through a situation today in your life, uh, and it seems like everything... All hope is dead and gone. You don't know how you're going to make it. And it may seem as though you will never live again. But if you look back at Scripture, just look at the Scripture. Jesus specializes in raising dead things and people to life. I want to close with this. I began to do some research this past week about Jesus and resurrection. When I read about Jairus' daughter being raised from the dead, she'd only been dead a few hours. Some people might have thought she had a sleeping disease. When I read about the widow of Nain that was following the coffin of her son out of the city to be buried, he'd been dead all day and maybe the day before. There wasn't any hope there. And then I read the story of Lazarus. That when he was sick, they came and said, hurry, Lazarus, your friend is dying. They need you to come. The Bible says Jesus hung around. And he didn't go right away. And finally, when he did go, He told the disciples, says, Lazarus is dead and I'm glad for your sake. What do you mean you're glad? He said, for your sake. You see, death ain't a problem to Jesus. Your situation may look dead today, but it ain't a problem to Jesus. Your circumstances may look dead today. It ain't a problem to Jesus. Uh, The doctors may have told you there's no hope today, but it ain't a problem to Jesus. Uh, Oh, yeah, your accountant may told you that you're broke, and it ain't a problem to Jesus. Uh, Somebody hear me today. Uh, Whatever you're facing ain't a problem to Jesus. You just got to get up from there and say, hey, I'm not going to let this grave hold me. I'm not going to let this grave hold me. You see, when Lazarus was raised, it was beyond all human reasoning because at four days, the body has started to decompose. They said, don't roll away the stone because he stinketh by now. Would you stand with me? Your situation may be stinking right now. Your circumstances may be stinking right now. 
Your attitude may be stinking right now. Your walk may be stinking right now. But I got news for somebody here today. I'm serving a risen Savior. I'm serving a risen Savior that says you don't have to live in that any longer. No, 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 no. You can get up from there. You can get up from there. Remember, Jesus is never late. If you're here on this resurrection Sunday, he's here for you. This little lady that's come down to pray today said, I need a miracle. I need God to do something for me. What about you today? What about you today? Why don't you let Jesus rise in your heart? There's a blessing of an empty tomb. Why don't you quit wallowing in what you're dealing with and say, God, I'm ready for a change. Who's ready for a change in the house today? Who's ready for God to do something different today? Why don't you get out from where you are right now? Come around this altar and say, Hey, God, I'm ready for a change today. I'm ready for you to do something different. I'm ready for a different walk. I'm ready for a different talk. I'm ready for something new to happen. I'm ready for a resurrection. Is it a place to hide this weary soul? This bag of gold. Yeah. With all my might. I'm slowly drifting. A bag of mine. But I remember what happened next. Just when I ran. Oh, I'll sing a lie. 